Okay, everyone, welcome to my stock market technical analysis channel. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to look at the broad markets. Then we'll dive into a couple sectors and look at some individual stocks as well. Uh, it's the end of the year and it is a holiday week. It's a shorter week. So uh, there is going to be a lot of, it, it's low, it's low volume basically. So what happens this week is not necessarily market consensus. However, there is the potential for some really big moves because when you have really thin trading, um, you know, if you have, if you have a lot of selling or a lot of buying, you can move the price quite a bit when you have uh, thin trading. So we're going to, well, let's get right into it. Before I do, if you're new, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to learn how to use technical analysis to find trade ideas, go ahead and take my training course. That's in the description below. Um, and so let's get right into it. We'll start out with the NASDAQ futures. All right. So here's what we're looking at. The pattern that we've been looking at recently on the hourly chart is this bearish rising wedge pattern. And you can see here, we were working up there. We just broke on, you know, late last week. And on Friday, they basically dipped it below all the way here in the NASDAQ futures and then recovered it on Friday. But this morning, you can see there's, that's a pretty impulsive breakdown now. Uh, and that is a sell signal. So we have a sell signal on the on this bearish pattern now. Uh, they made it look like it was going to happen Friday, but again, that's pretty impulsive. And now you can see they're just flagging out. I suspect they're going to flag out uh, and continue to flag and then roll over. Uh, and that's what I'm looking for. Next level of support on the Nasdaq futures is about 12407, 12406, something like that. Let's look at the triple Q's here. Uh, triple Q's, which is your tech sector ETF. This is just a good ETF to use for, for you know tech stocks, basically. And this one, so we did get a sell signal because here's your bearish rising wedge pattern right there. Uh, you, got the, you actually got the sell signal right up here. When we started to break down, um, this was your sell signal right here on this hourly. Then they did a kickback rally and then ra rallied again. But really, that this area has held as the high so far. So this sell signal, uh, you know, is intact. It just wasn't very impulsive. So what I was really looking for was some sort of impulsive breakdown. Um, and you know, we just didn't get that impulsive of a of a breakdown. So this continues to roll over and you can see today that's pretty impulsive where you gap down like that pretty impulsive candle it looks like they're given you know doing a kickback rally we'll see where this closes though do we close you know if i roll to the daily do, are they able to recover this all the way back up to this 30940 area uh or does it you know is this rally that's happening as i as we speak uh roll over if I look at the daily, I suspect it rolls over because we have negative divergence that's been intact and it remains intact. So you can see here, this negative divergence on the RSI, you made a lower high right here and price made a higher high. So that's a divergent high, which means price is diverging from momentum. Uh, divergence is usually an indicator that, uh, you know, it's momentum goes first and then price follows. That's typically how it works. If I look at the PPO right here on the daily chart, you'll see kind of some, you know, it's whippy for sure. And that's expected with this week, but we're crossing back below. As I zoom in, you can see there's your bearish crossover again. So they crossed below, whipped it back up, crossing back below. Uh, and it shows there on the histogram as well. You can see how we're getting another red candle. So I think the selling continues. This looks like it's going to, uh, you know, continue to move down, uh, and we just need to see how the day closes. Obviously, let's look at the spy here. Spy had a nice clean breakdown. Uh, let's see where the day closes, or let's go to the hourly here, and I'll show you the breakdown. So there's the breakdown from here's your price channel, this upward price channel. This goes back to really, you know, November, the beginning of November. So almost a two month long uh, trend. And, you know, there's your breakdown. So you had an impulsive breakdown. Looks like it's running up to do a kickback rally. Uh, so look for that to fail here. This was an impulsive breakdown uh, on the hourly chart. And so it should get rejected right there at resistance. 
Um, <clears throat> but, you know, we need to see that rejection. And if you look at the daily here, where do they close the day, I guess, is really the most important thing. Are they able to bounce it back up and recover it and close it right at support? Uh, or does it get rejected uh, throughout the day and sell off? So we have to watch that. Again, SPY has big negative divergence. Let me zoom out right here. This, you know, we have negative divergence right there. You can see it. And that is basically, you know, you made a new high right up in here and it was on a divergent low. So momentum is fading. And then if you look at the PPO, you can see again, bearish crossover right there. There's your bearish crossover. So we've got bearish momentum technical indicators and we've got a breakdown of support. We just need to see for, you know, we just need to see more selling. Uh, does it happen this week? Or do they do they kind of hold it in there this week and then maybe it happens, you know, the beginning of next year or into, you know, maybe it maybe it happens, you know, uh, this week or next week. I, I don't know. The point is breakdowns are breakdowns and you have to basically trade those. And the way I look, look at it is when you get a breakdown, you can take it and and then wait for it to prove you wrong, basically. So a recovery back into support here and a close back into here would be bullish and a rejection would be bearish. Uh, let's look at the SPY futures real quick. I forgot to cover those. So SPY futures, if you look here on the hourly, here's your uptrend. This is going back to November. You have an uptrend right there. And we broke, so there's a sell signal, but it's, so far you can see they're recovering it. So let's see what happens. Does it hold and recover support? And this was just a whipsaw signal. Again, they're very common this week because they're such thin trading. Or does it get rejected here? And you know, are they making it look like it's gonna recover and then it's gonna sell off and get rejected? I don't know, so we have to wait to see how that kind of plays out. Let's look at gold. It's kind of bouncing off support. Um, here's gold bullion. And if you look at the daily, this is your downtrend line. You can see several reactions along this trend line. Uh, this was your bull trap, so they broke it out, made it look like it was gonna break out, and then it impulsively sold off. So that's a bear trap or sorry, a bull trap. And that bull trap created the move down to the major support at around 1790. Where 1790 come from? Well, if you look at the weekly and you roll back to 2013, that was the former resistance level of that last bull market. All right, three reactions there. So as we roll in, you can see that's where it came down to, held for two weeks exactly right there. And look at the weekly close. Yeah, you had interweek dips, but the weekly close closed basically right at 1790. So that is the level that is playing. And now we're starting to break to the upside. We're back above this downtrend line. Let me go back to the daily here. You can see we're above it. We've come down and tagged it, you know, once already, had a back test. So it looks bullish. We'll see how, if we get continued upward price action, it does look bullish. Um, however, you know, we don't have any divergences on the RSI. All we have is bullish momentum and we have bullish price action. Let's look at the dollar. <clears throat> so the dollar, the one thing about the dollar is it continues to put in this bullish divergence. See how the momentum is moving higher. It made a higher low than the previous low and price made a new lower low. So that bullish divergence continues to be there on the PPO, let me show you that. We don't have a bullish crossover, so there's no confirmation on that divergence yet. And we do have a bullish falling wedge on the dollar, but no breakout. So I think there's more work to be done here on the dollar to figure out if this, you know, if we're gonna get some sort of a substantial rally in the dollar. Uh, but as of right now, still, you know, it's the trend is still down and there's just signs, some signs showing that there's the potential for a trend reversal, but we don't have any buy signals on the dollar yet. XLV, so this is the second largest sector in the S&P 500. Um, and the trend line that I've really been tracking against is right here. Uh, it's really, it has been reacting to this trend line recently right up in this area. It's not the cleanest trend line though. However, the thing that about the XLV where I think we're gonna go lower, we got all these gaps right here. See the gaps to be filled. So it gapped up to make this huge ramp up. And then really from that high, it's just been kind of drifting sideways. If you look here on the, 
on the daily as well. Negative divergence right there on the RSI. Uh, and on the PPO, we have that bearish crossover right here. It's kind of whippy, but we do, you know, we do have the bearish crossover. There was your bearish crossover right there. Crossed over, back test right there, and then heading pointed down. So in general, this is bearish. It's pointed down. Let's look at the hourly here. You can see they sold it down to my trend line today. Let me uh, extend this. <clears throat> There's that. That was a level of support. It was this gap right here. So it's, you know, it makes sense. We get, we're getting a reaction right here. I think that reaction, you know, we could run up and fill the gap or even do a full back test. But I think it's likely that this continues lower and starts to fill some of these gaps right here. Um, so next level of support would be gap entry, which is about 107.82. And then gap, we got a gap fill that is about 106. Uh, and then we've got another gap below at 103.53. And then we have the big kind of pattern low, really it would be about this 97. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, yeah, we've got 97 down here. So I think that's the ultimate target is about 97. That's where I'm looking for this thing to go. But the way I'm gonna play it is I am short this. I'm gonna take profit as we start to fill these gaps or come close. I always step in a little early, but I'll probably take some profit as we fill some of these gaps and then hold us, you know, 25% uh, or so of the trade uh, all the way down to the final target of about 97. But yeah, the trade's working. I mean, it's, I think I entered the trade right. Let me look at the daily. It's just, it's not working a lot. I entered right here. I'm basically break even on the trade right now. It's, it's just been a grind. It's going nowhere. So I just, I'll continue to hold it. Financials haven't really done much over the last few days. They're just kind of in this area of resistance. I suspect they get rejected. Um, we'll continue to watch these. Energy. So I pointed this one out uh, last week that I was t saying this looked bearish as we were rising. Uh, the reason why I liked it to the short side is you had negative divergence right here on the daily. Clear negative divergence. Look at the PPO. Bearish crossover. Nice clean crossover and headed straight down. So all, everything looks bearish on the momentum indicators. And then you have this trend line right here on the daily chart. And you got an impulsive breakdown or sell signal. I pointed that out in my videos. A little bit of a sideways drift and then we continue down. So again, looks bearish. And you can see what's going on here with the, the refiners, ExxonMobil and Chevron. Down 3% uh, today. Um, yeah, and look at my hourly. I've got my trend lines marked. I've had these trend lines marked up on the way up. You know, when we were trading this to the long side, these are where the trend lines that I had marked out. And, you know, they're acting as support to the on the downside. So when this next level goes 41, uh, we look, we look, you know, probably down to this 36, 37 area. I'm watching Walmart here. I was trading Walmart a while ago. It didn't work out, but um, basically we've got this trend line right here on the hourly. Here's the lows, here's a reaction, there's a reaction, and we're starting to break down, uh, but it's not impulsive. You can see it's really choppy in this area where they're breaking down and coming back. So I'm waiting to see some sort of an impulsive move down. And if it breaks from here, then I think it's likely we head down to this major trend line down here. Uh, and I also have the 200 day moving average. I've started to look at some of those a little bit closer. Um, and, but I think we head down to this major trend line, which is about 128, 130, depending on where we get there. Where do I get that trend line? Well, if you go to the weekly, that is, that's this bearish rising wedge that we've had, uh, really going back to 2015. And you can see reaction here on the week, reaction there, reaction there. And then it finally broke above, uh, came back, broke above again. But you can see, look at all the reactions on the weekly where it held, you know, right in that area. See where the weeks were closing. So it validates that. And then an impulsive break. And we've really just run straight up. So if we get that impulsive sell signal, I think we come back down to that trend line and potentially even break this bearish rising wedge. Again, the bearish rising wedge is a bearish pattern. A lot of the time you'll see market makers do, I've seen it a lot lately where they, there's a bearish pattern and then the market just runs it to the upside of that pattern and then it fails and breaks and comes all the way down and you get bit, you know, you get 
a substantial move to the downside. So if that happens and we start to break this bearish pattern, I'd look for Walmart to come down to, you know, all the way down to this 59 or it's about 60 level and 42, it's about 43, somewhere in there. That's the long-term range that this held for, you know, really from 1999 till about, you know, about 10, 11 years or so. Um, and that would probably be the, the final target or the bear market target for Walmart is down back down into this range. Um, so there's just something to watch. Again, going back to the hourly, we don't have a sell signal. We're just hanging in there. Um, if you look at the daily, though, negative divergence right there. See the negative divergence? Uh, and on the PPO, let me zoom in there, you know, bearish crossover. So we've got bearish momentum. We just don't have bearish price action yet. Um, update on this Joe one. So what I did, I'm watching it, but what I did is I took half my position off. I did that last week. And um, so I'm holding half the position I previously had. Again, I entered right here on the bullish breakout of this bear, you know, on this, this is a bullish falling wedge. We had bullish divergence right here. And there was your breakout. So I bought this thing right here and it's run up, you know, from the there to there about, you know, 18% or so. But see, now it's got negative divergence or bearish divergence right here. So I don't like that. Um, and we've kind of recaptured this flag area now too. So this to me looks like a divergent high. Now, if we can break higher and burn through this divergence, that's very bullish. Uh, and I would look to probably add back to my position. But for now, with this negative divergence, maybe we want to come down and, you know, come all the way down here or possibly even down to this 32, 36 area. I'd be looking to buy back down here at 32, 36 area if it, um, you know, if it gets down there. And this one I did buy last week. It's not doing anything yet, but corn. So I bought a little bit of this last week. It's here's the pattern. It's not the cleanest because you've got you only you have three reactions now. You've got one here. Uh, this is going back to 2014, but on the daily chart, one there got a reaction here, and then most recently we had a reaction right here. You can see how it rejected. So that is a reaction, and now we've broken out to the upside. It's not that impulsive yet though. So I'm waiting to see if it's going to become more impulsive. Look at the PPO right here. You can see bullish crossover right there. So that looks good. And, uh, you know, yeah, it looks good. And really down here at the lows right here was bullish divergence all the way down here. So this right, this price action was a divergent low. And really from that divergent low, it, the things run up, oh, 20% or so. But it looks like it's continuing that run. So and starting to possibly break a major bear market downtrend. So this is where I want to buy, be buying things. You know, the market is at all time highs with crazy, crazy overbought, <clears throat> extreme indicators all over the place. And yet there's areas like this that have been in have been in bear markets and they look like they're starting brand new bull markets. So that's where I want to be a buyer. I want to buy a bull market when it's just starting, not when it's, you know, potentially ending <clears throat> Uber here. So I pulled my trade on this last week when it was, uh, you know, I had made some profit from the breakdown here, was holding this support line. Let me show you on the hourly. <clears throat> Basically, it started to fall right there. I don't know where this support line actually came from. I think it was just a short term support that I saw it holding and I pulled it. Um, it wasn't a very large position, uh, but the market was kind of hanging in there. So because the market was hanging in there. Uh, I thought we were probably going to get a kickback rally in this thing. And that's the other thing I've seen. The market doesn't want to just fall out of bed and it's likely to not do it completely at the end of the year. So I would I'm expecting on breakdowns, we get kickback rallies uh, before, you know, before the real breakdown happens. So Uber obviously being one of those high flying momentum stocks that everybody that, you know, wants to buy on this momentum, the momentum's broken. Uh, right there. This is your upward momentum bearish rising wedge, but and you broke, but we're getting a kickback rally. So where's this rally go? Well, I think it's likely to go right there at this breakdown, this breakdown candle right about there. So I'll probably take the short, I'll probably add back to the short right there at about 5244, somewhere right in there. Maybe they step in a little bit early, but that's resistance, I think. 
Uh, and that's where I'm looking for this thing to really stop going up. Intel down another 3%. So again, I pointed this out. I've been talking about Intel for a while and really what I've been talking about is that it has the potential to be starting a bear market. Where do you want to where do you want to enter a short position? Well, I like to start a short position if you can catch the beginning of a bear market. That's obviously a good time to start a short short position. Here is the 2009 lows in Intel. Here's your weekly chart. So this is a long-term chart price channel, upward price channel right there. And recently you can see we broke we broke that price that that support basically on the weekly. They recovered it, made it look like a, you know, a false breakdown and then but it's rejected since. So what does this do? Do we chop around here some more? Yeah, that's possible and probably I think that's probable as well. But we did get that impulsive breakdown. And so we could easily uh, just continue lower. And if this is starting a bear market right here, then next level of support is, you know, about this 4373 area. We break that, next level of support is all the way down here at 3812, 3820. I think it's very likely you get a reaction in there. Let's look at this ZG. I think this one has a pretty high likelihood of breaking down. Um, here is the daily chart. You have an uptrend line right there. And you also have, you know, pretty big negative divergence that's been in place for a while. But if you want to just mark it there, you could mark it there. But negative divergence has shown up. And we broke the trend line support right here. So there's your trend line support break, back test one, back test two. So again, every time it rallies, it's just rallying right into resistance and then it's likely to fail. So we're in the area where it's in a high, high probability area of rolling down. Let's look at the PPO starting to point down. So a little bit more and we'll get that bearish crossover. Uh, negative divergence, break of price support and, you know, at resistance. FedEx here continues to break down. So from the from the sell signal that I pointed out, here's your breakdown. This thing's down as of right now by eight and a half percent. And I think that the next level of support is right here at about 260. 259 or so. Um, yeah, we can have a kickback rally up to this area, 276.58, and then roll over. Uh, but again, still still bearish. Think it's going lower. Okay, let's look at Qualcomm, and I'll wrap up with this one. Qualcomm, so upward price channel on the hourly. Uh, obviously, still in that price channel, so we have not broken support, and we're actually close to support. Looks like the buyers are kind of stepping in. Um, I think it's likely we break support here, uh, but we could get another leg higher, obviously. Looking at the daily, uh, you've got on the daily, you've got negative divergence right there. Look at the PPO. Let me kind of blow that up a little bit. And you've got bearish crossovers pointed down right there. Um, so the PPO is saying negative momentum. The RSI is saying momentum has been fading. Uh, and we have this price channel. So looking for a sell signal or impulsive breakdown, what I think, the way I think this one's gonna come, I think we're going to get a, a sell signal and it's gonna gap down right to this support at about 130.14. Now that's a ways down there, so it might just break and head down there. Yeah, that's about 11%. Uh, you know, that's a little bit too much. Maybe, maybe we don't gap down there, but I think the sell signal when it comes is gonna head straight down to that level of one, about 130 and then you'll find some support. You're likely to get a reaction and a bounce. So what I'll probably do, I'm continuing to short this thing, and I'll, I'll look for, I'll look to take profit on that. Uh, or and you could probably flip, even flip long for a short-term trade down there. But again, once that breaks, I think it's likely that we start to work our way lower. Next level of major support about 110, and then we've got another gap down here at 93. So again, I think it, when it's all said and done, if we break and we get that sell signal, <clears throat> I think we I think we get close to about this 93, 94 uh, in Qualcomm. And that's really all I got. Thanks everyone, appreciate it. Leave me a thumbs up and a comment. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.